prepped and let Douglas Freshkov take it. I know he's only got four minutes and also Daniel had his hand up and we'll see if we have time for that question. Do we do Daniel first or should I say? Uh, sure. Yeah, no, I, I was just wanted to emphasize that kind of, I'm, I'm a little bit on Douglas's uh, uh, concerns, but I think I, f I have found um, a certain um, confidence in what I hear from the scenario community. I'm, I'm fairly new to the community, but my concern is, you know, technology is always the, the menu and not the meal. The meal itself are our communities that we form. So hopefully in, in the platform that they build is that, that, you know, the medium is the message and now our community is the medium. So, you know, if you want to get out your message or whatever, it's about the, the, the connections and the formation of your communities and how it fits into like an ecosystem. And I, I think this is what everybody's trying to um, articulate or whatever, but it's, it's about pushing this narrative to more of the collective and how we build this new story. And it kind of goes back to the old story of where we kind of keep it peer to peer, um, we keep it local and hopefully we could scale it up. But I, I always kind of don't want to lose um, the humanity. And I, that's where I, I, I'm glad when Greg speaks, because he wants to put, um, you know, humanity in the equation. And it's not just technology. And, it, it, and it's it building the, your reputation and your communities. And hopefully the technology facilitates that. But I was just kind of wondering, you're uh, maybe pushing that narrative of the collective. Yeah, I mean, I mean, in in closing this, I mean, I'd say to, first off, I mean, I realize I've been uh, a little uh, hard on you, but I'm doing that. I mean, it, it, in in good faith. I mean, the the most important thing is that you know that that you guys exist, right? That there still exists a community of people who not only understand how technology works, but who um, who want to build it towards uh, progressive human human ends. You know, the vast majority of people I know who are um, who, who who are technologically qualified. You know, the kids who come out of Stanford or MIT end up the, going to work for Goldman Sachs, building algorithms that extract value from the market, or take B.J. Fogg's Captology to learn the truly darker side of the attention economy and how to. Uh, uh, not just uh, create sticky apps and websites and hypnotizing technologies, but ones that are are programmed to elicit certain behaviors from us. I mean, these kids are studying um, Pavlovian response and Freudian response and the behavioral triangle. And, you know, these all these, I mean, what they're learning is are, are really the dark arts and how to translate them into digital platforms so that, um, you, our technologies can extract value from us on behalf of those same 50 shareholders who own half the world's wealth right now. Um, so yay that you yay that you exist and yay that you want to um, you know build technologies along uh, uh, that are that are consistent with peer-to-peer -peer values um, from the bottom up. Right. That said, there's the my biggest fear is not you or your intentions, but whether or not the majority of the user base that could eventually migrate to the platform will be capable of distinguishing what the space is about. So, you know, Mark, you know, or the Winklevoss brothers, when they got interested in Bitcoin, it was completely misunderstanding what Bitcoin was for, what a blockchain is for. And they did manage with their massive billions to hijack both, both practically and culturally what the blockchain even means to a majority of people. The blockchain now means to people, oh, did I get in early enough to make money off this ridiculous pyramid scheme, which is the opposite, right? It's the opposite. And part of the reason why that happened is because the, the blockchain people were not good enough at expressing what problem they were solving for, for one. And second is they were using symbol systems 
to token and coin that are so embedded in our psyche culturally as scarcity based currencies that they that they that we couldn't we we regular people couldn't shift fast enough it's right. but just in in closing what i was going to say was there there the the there was a moment when the AOL people got plugged into the real internet those of you who are old remember it it was the moment that thousands of people in AOL came onto usenet not understanding what the internet was for you know and it changed the fabric of the internet and and still we are still recovering from that initial onslaught of people who didn't know what the technologies were for and for whom the language of the net evoked very different, uh, these were signs to them of different things. So, I mean, the, the main thing I would advise you guys to be aware of is that the greater culture is not primed to hear these words or to understand these technologies the same way that we do right and they're the that the the profound more profound task than building the technology will be priming the greater culture to behaviors that are consonant with the value system of the technology yeah. i mean Let's just i'm 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 just talking about the way you communicate and how you bring people on the onboarding process so that they understand. For most people, the ideas of tokens are still something you can accumulate and save for the future, not a balance that you might try to keep near zero in order to uh, – people don't understand money as a, as a way of optimizing transactions and communication. They think of money as a way to stave off death. And those are two – you know what I mean? <laughs> those are two really different – uh, uh, anchors and, uh, and and what you're talking about is not just a different way of using technology, but something that's going to require a, a certain amount of edu of reeducation, really, of of your user base.